Good. The October 16th Committee of the Whole to order. Uh, roll call. Alder Feldy is excused. Alder Filiki Pineski. Alder Salazar. Here. Alder Ackley is excused. Alder Ramey. Here. Alder Russ is here. Alder Decker. Here. Alder Perella. Here. Alder Mitchell. Here. And Alder Heideman. Here. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, I'm looking for approval of minutes from the Committee of the Whole from September 11th, 2023. I move to approve. Second. Oh. Uh, moved and seconded. All those in favor? For any discussion on those minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Chair votes aye. All opposed? Ayes have it. Nobody for public forum. Alrighty. We are going to talk about item number five, RO number 51 23 24 by City Plan Commission, to whom was referred direct referral. RO number 45-23-24 by finance directors submitting capital improvements program requests for the years 2024 through 2028, referring the CIP request to council. This will lay over. Caitlin's going to have a few small little presentation and this will be our opportunity to ask questions to all the department heads that are here tonight. Director Creeper. Thank you, I do have two slides of my overview for tonight, so it's really short. Um, I just wanted to give an update on the budget timeline and the goals for tonight's meeting. Uh, tonight, of course, we are reviewing the capital improvement requests. Um, as Alder Russ mentioned, those are um, available, have been available online, and so um, we want to make sure we're going over those and any questions that you may have. Uh, next week on October 23rd, um, that will be the opportunity for this body to make any changes to the preliminary budget before the final version is submitted to council for approval. Uh, I will also point out that Administrator Bradley's first day is next Monday, so he will have the uh, <laughs> pleasure of coming to this meeting next week um, and helping with the finalization of the budget. Additionally, on November 6th, there will be the public hearing for the budget and the adoption of the final budget as re recommended from this body. Hope to have that that night. So the goals for tonight um, for the Committee of the Whole uh, is to gain an understanding of the 2024 to 2028 Capital Improvement Plan requests. I will point out that Usually the um, 2024 requests are what we would be focusing on because that is what's going to be included in the budget that comes back next week. The 2025 through 2028 requests, those are more for planning purposes and to make sure that the council is aware of what items are coming down the line so that we can plan, plan accordingly. Um, the goal, other goal I suppose is that uh, we receive the committee's uh, guidance so that we can um, come to get some expectations um, for both myself and Administrator Bradley on his first day to make sure that what we bring forward next week is in the most final version as that we can. I do have an asterisk here and I want to just request from the committee that if you do have any changes that you are hoping to see on the budget next week, um, what, what I would request is that you contact myself and the mayor in order for us to help you draft your change in a way that allows it to actually be voted on next week. So we can help you with the structure of how that needs to be because that has been um, an issue in the past. So we just ask that you um, make sure to contact us as soon as you can just to make sure we can help you with that. All right, thank you, Director Krieger. Do we have any questions on the CIP budget? We've had it since September 26th. All righty, Alder Perella. Um, you please tell me if this is not right. Um, it, is, it is only partially relevant. So um, in relation to what Director Kruger just said, to send possible changes or asking for changes via um, directly, um, 
so I, I then I need clarification on how, again, uh, how we are going to vote on the budget. Are we going to vote item by item? So should I send my uh, request or opinion or concerns item by item? Sure, so unless the uh, chair of this committee changes how we are planned to uh, go forward with it next week, the intention is there is a preliminary budget that will be out there. An updated version will be coming out with any recommendations or requests from this body tonight regarding the capital requests that have been presented. Um, from there, we have the preliminary budget and your requests would be, let's say if you want to fund something, you would, because we are currently balanced, if you want to fund something, we have to cut something else in the operating budget in order to do so. So that's why I'm requesting that you ask for my assistance and the mayor's assistance in order to make sure that that is structured in a way that can actually be voted on. So unless the chair of uh, Alder Russ decides to change and go line by line, that was my intention and that was my understanding of how to proceed next week. You are referring to the CIP and to the uh, to in the budget. To, I mean, separately as well. Correct. Correct. So both items will actually come forward next week again um, once we meet as a committee of the whole. Okay. So each section will get voted on separately. So we will have the capital improvements program and the requests that came from there and which ones you have approved. That will get approved separately from the full budget. If there are items that you change in the capital improvement program, the first item, that would be something that would then, on the final version that goes to council on the on November 6th, would include those changes. So there will be an, another opportunity to have those somehow considered before November 6th. Correct. Okay. Between this week and next Monday would be your chance to work with myself and the mayor. Thank you so much. So I would just like also to reiterate that this meeting tonight is to ask questions you have on the CIP from the directors if you've had the opportunity to look at it. We've had this since September 26th when Director Krieger emailed all of us this. Alrighty, Alder Mitchell. Apologize to everybody who has to remain present throughout this meeting in advance. I have maybe a few questions. Just starting out generally and I'm Happy to hand off to somebody else to speak a little bit. I will get very bored of hearing myself quickly. Uh, it looks like the borrowing and the general size and scope of the plan, just even if we focus on the 2024 year, has gone up quite a bit since last year's plan, where in theory 24 items were somewhat projected out. Obviously, things change as time passes. Uh, was there a general reason for that? I guess I don't really know who to ask that directly. I'm hoping to knock out some of my other questions so I don't have to go item by item. Sure, I can try my best at that. So the uh, requests that you see tonight are all of the requests that were submitted um, due to the fact that we don't have a city administrator and we haven't gotten full council direction on what is required. What would be supported in the capital plan. They are all included. Some of these may have been maybe struck out previously um, from a former administrator or through that process of working with the department heads. Um, I personally do not feel like it is my place or within the scope of my duties to make any decisions regarding the capital improvement plan um, and what is funded and what is not. So that is why everything got brought forward to you. If there is a sense of the council that borrowing would be too high with what is in there currently, that's something that I can work with and at least come up with um, some suggestions on how to reduce the borrowing in order to accommodate the requests of the council. So that is exactly the type of direction I guess I'm looking for. Thank you. Good, I'll hand off. All right, Alder Felicki Pineski. Thank you. Um, just to follow up a little bit about that, is it possible for us to get the itemized what wasn't in it last year when we approved a five-year plan and what got put back in? I would have to look at the documentation that I have available right. to me. There were several meetings with department heads and the administrator at the time that looked at the uh, 
plans and kind of filtered through to get the final requests. So I'm not sure, but department heads might have information that, that could back up some of the, the requests, but I would have to dig into it a little bit. So the document that we received for our capital improvements last year, is, is it, if I took that document and looked at 2024 and put them side by side, would I be able to see what got put in that wasn't there? Yes, so you would be able to see what was added um, compared to what was in there. I actually, when the request came in, I did a very similar exercise to what you're discussing where I was comparing what was previously requested when it got moved to just so I had notes um, and I'm more than happy to share those with you if that would be helpful and with anybody who requests that. I would appreciate that, that would be very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. All righty, do we have more questions? Alder Mitchell. Okay, unfortunately now we just will go through them in order. <laughs> uh, based on order listed, the first thing that caught my eye, I believe I remember the discussion for the Uptown Social Gym uh, a couple years back now, uh, where Construction costs were estimated at 600,000. I do see that that went higher now. I guess it was my understanding that we were hoping for fundraising on that project. Would she mind sharing with us what changed and what it would look like without that extra contribution? Because I did see that's coming from tax levy rather than even geo bonding or anything. Sure, happy to chime in and give some context. So um, the agreement of the friends to fund the second phase of construction predates my hiring. Um, we, through our estimates, I might pull Mike Wilmus up to, to help me here, but in our initial estimates, we thought the cost of the gym would be about $600,000. That's what the friends had been planning for. And we had quite a shock a few months ago when um, J.H. Hassinger, which is the contractor that did the first phase of construction, they were requested to give an updated quote on what it would take to finish the gym and came back at $850,000. So we have been fundraising. Um, fun, some funds have been raised. The friends are actually in a position, um, charitable, charitable giving has gone up a lot in my time in this role. Um, earned revenue is really where we've seen significant gains, which will probably surprise no one knowing that our membership has more than doubled. Um, so really where the, the position the friends are in is, um, to plan on financing this phase of construction. Um, Director Kruger and I have had conversations about what that could look like. The friends have actually gone out to solicit um, estimates for formal finance through local banking institutions, have some options, but maybe there's some sort of agreement that can happen between the friends and the city. Um, Prior to the former city administrator leaving, we were in the process of developing an, a formal MOU that would clarify the role of the friends, the role of the city in how those two organizations operate together. That was never finalized. So my hope with administrator Bradley coming on, that's, that can be something that um, is on his long list of items to address. But um, so basically the estimate for doing the gym is significantly higher than the friends were anticipating. So despite success in fundraising, um, despite success in earned revenue increasing, we actually were in a meeting, um, Mike Wilmus, Director Beeble and I with the architect and I was the one, you know, as they're asking, do you want X, do you want Y? I was the one like, hey guys, we're getting really up there in terms of our estimates here. And um, it was my colleagues in DPW that said, maybe, maybe there's an opportunity to ask for some additional support through the CIP process. So certainly not asking the city to take over the whole project. The friends are happy to contribute where we can, um, but just with the increased cost of this construction on this project, um, just asking for the city to help out a bit. Thank you. You're welcome. You want to keep going? Oh, sure. <laughs> Nobody else is queued. You can keep going all you want. Oh, I'm queued. In front of us, at least in front of me when I sat down, I, there's a vehicle acquisition and replacement schedule. One of the other items that popped out to me right away when I was looking through the 
proposed CIP, and I'm guessing that is what this is in relation to was, I have too many pieces of paper in front of me, the motor vehicle fund section. Off the top of my head, I want to say the figure in this plan for the four-year period that overlapped the previous was about four, a little under four and a half times what it was in the prior year. Looked like the schedule of vehicles to be replaced had grown significantly. What was behind that rather drastic shift? Oh. Rick, Rick Nye from our, our motor vehicle superintendent, he, he should be able to provide some insight and background on it. But I, but I can tell you, if, you know, since COVID, uh, the prices of vehicles has, and equipment has skyrocketed in cost. And uh, supply chain has is, is 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 been a major uh, factor in, in, in acquiring equipment as well. So Rick, if you'd like to expand more, that'd be great. Yes, in, in years past, we're going back, let's say 20 years, um, the motor vehicle usually spent about a million dollars a year on equipment back as far back as like 2004. So throughout the course of the years, like late 2000s and early teens, we've spent a few years where we didn't buy any equipment. And then previous administrations was limiting our spending so, so drastically that we're coming to a point now where it's almost not sustainable to keep doing all the functions the citizens need with the, with the equipment we have. Let's say uh, what David was talking about as far as supply chain, when, when a truck would go down, uh, it used to take a day or two to get the parts. Now it's taking a couple weeks. So if you've got multiple trucks down and it's taking a couple weeks and we get to like a snow, a snow situation or a garbage situation, we're, get, we're dangerously close and not being able to complete those functions. So we're at, that's why we're asking for so much more to play catch up get ourselves back to where we actually have a fleet that we can count on. Thank you. Alrighty, I'm gonna have you key back in, Older Mitch, Older Felicki Paneski. Thank you. Um, I would like to go to the revenue portion and there are, there's a line that says county, state, and federal grants, 12.2 million, 1.9 million, 2.6 million, 8.1 million. Um, we, and then there's county sales tax. I don't see the portion that the county shares with the city for streets. Is that not in a capital improvements or is it in the grants? Yes, uh, that was realized after this was published, it was miscoded in the spreadsheet, so that will be updated in the final version. We do have an increase in funding from the county in the sales tax portion. Okay, thank you. Already, Alder Perella. Yeah, I would like to go back a moment to the gym. Um, so we here we have 850,000, but is the 600,000, this includes the 600,000 that is somewhat uh, guaranteed by the friends for the gym or not? Yeah, so actually the request of the city is 250,000 to make up the difference. So the friends are prepared to finance 600,000 for the renovation. And I should share the friends have been financing uh, and, and paying for additional things on top of that 600,000, uh, roughly 200,000 for furnishings at this point, and there will be additional equipment needed. Um, but so the friends are ready to finance 600,000 and requesting 250 to make up that increased es estimate. So then just a technicality, why do we have 850 on the CIP? If we, uh, if the city, in this case, I'm not going to vote to have 850. So the entirety of the project will be paid by the city, but reimbursed from the friends. So in order for our budget to be uh, the accurate number so that I can have purchase orders attached to it, needs to be the full amount. So even if the project came forward and there was no request for city funds, you would have seen it for 600,000 with a $600,000 donation uh, offset revenue. Thank you so much. I have a, a 
an additional question about the bridge. So there is for 2024, is this on? Yes. <laughs> for 2024, there is a $250,000 for the bridge, the pedestrian bridge. So I assume the, the forecast is that for the plans that we mentioned before, um, we need $250,000. It's $250,000 in 2024 and an additional 250000 in 25. So the design costs and construction um, in a document and plan specification, construction estimates, so the total design portion is 500000 roughly around 7% of the cost of the bridge. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, Alder Felicki Pineski. Thank you very much. Um, actually, the bridge was one of mine because we have a line that says design service. And then in 2027, uh, we have an $8 million expenditure for our bridge. Um, okay. Uh, the fire department. Um, we have ambulance, basically a quarter of a million dollars next year, and then 400000 the year after and then 430,000 the year after that. So that's, that's a concern to me. We have a $1.7 million engine this year, and we have an $8 million construction this year. So I would like the chief to talk us through what's going on with the fire department. Yeah, glad to, thank you. So uh, that, for, to answer your first question with the ambulance, the... Uh, <laughs> 263,000 and change for 2024 is to finish the payment that we started. Uh, if you recall, uh, due to our ambulances breaking down, I came to council uh, several, several months ago uh, and you approved that. So we paid pr uh, some of the funds from last year and now we have to finish paying it out of 24. So that's what that 263. Ambulances, as Director Beeble has mentioned, uh, we're no different. The uh, supply, the cost, the chassis, everything has gone up. So ambulances used to cost two, two years ago, 350, 300. And now uh, by 2026, they're gonna be in the 400s. And then as we continue down the road, they're gonna be more expensive. So uh, the, the ambulances in 25 and 26 will, will round out our fleet. Uh, the quint that you mentioned for 1.7 million, if you recall that we've been trying to get uh, the truck ordered uh, to replace our, our um, vehicle, our oldest vehicle, and uh, unfortunately the supply, it's three to four year lead time to build. If we don't order it and purchase it in 24, and it was on the docket for 26 originally, uh, I'm gonna be in a world of hurt in about three years because it's gonna be three to four years to build. So if we were to wait for 26, that's why I'm asking to order it now. It, it won't get here till 26, but we have to pay for it. So that's why we're asking for the funds in 24. Um, and then you mentioned the uh, station three construction. So if you recall, when we first started this and presented it last year and, and the year before, uh, this, just like uh, Director Bebo had the design of the, the walk bridge, the pedestrian bridge, we paid for the design for the architect study and all. And this six million this year uh, in 24 and six million in 25 is to split the cost over two years and to get that station three headquarters uh, built. Again, it's not ADA compatible. Uh, the bathrooms are the single multi-head bathrooms that are not gender neutral. Um, there's many, many things. We have sewage coming in the kitchen, which is not healthy. Uh, we have leaks coming in through the, every single floor of our station. So. Um, it's, it's in dire need and our generator is dying and we can't, we have to have an emergency generator. Otherwise we can't open the doors or respond. So all these things are failing all at once. And, um, yeah, let me know if you have any other questions. Great. Thank you. Alder Mitchell. Thank you, Chair. Find the spot on the list. The next item I had was the 
comprehensive plan and zoning. And I know there was discussion, there's been discussion for quite a while about a complete overhaul of the zoning code, modernization, uh, making it a bit more workable and readable. I know the comprehensive plan comes up as well. I guess the last, not the last I'd heard because we talked about this in City Plan Commission recently, but prior to the last few months, it was my understanding that there wasn't a need to go outside for the comprehensive plan. And it looks like we're looking at 200,000 from tax levy this coming year in 24 and then a projected 50 the year following. I guess my questions would be two part. The first being, is it appropriate that these two are combined into one item or would it make more sense for them to be separate requests? And then I guess an explanation as to what a comprehensive plan that we are paying for, what value that is going to provide that we are not currently enjoying. So as you stated, our comprehensive plan is way out of date. It's, it's a requirement that we, um, of the state that we have a, uh, a comprehensive plan in place. Our last plan was uh, 2011, I believe. And so it's, it's way past its 10 year life. So um, as far as doing that in house, we don't have capacity. Um, we're, we just have no capacity to take that on. Um, I believe that the um, that we have gone out to bid once. We're planning to rebid that as well to be able to find a consultant to help us write that. As far as separate egum, we certainly could. We didn't know exactly what the price tag would come in at, so I guess it was just our way of kind of um, giving ourselves some cushion there to to make sure that we could the comprehensive plan being the priority today for the 2024 year. Thank you. Do you have more questions, Alder Mitchell? Always. There you go. Floor is yours. Oh, can you hold on for one second? I most certainly can. All right. right. We'll come back to you. Alder Felicki Paneski. Thank you. I just wanted to say the comprehensive plan is significant for development because grants are not given unless you have a comprehensive plan. And they're they're savvy to the fact that ours is out of date. Uh, the other is we we have worked with the strategic plan, which is different than the comprehensive plan. So I would like my colleagues not to confuse those two. Um, and then I do have another question, and it's uh, the Boots and Sports Complex development. And we've got over five years, we got a total of three quarters of a million it's on page four. Um, can you talk to me about what we're spending 100,000 and 250,000 and 100,000 and 200,000 on? Director Beeble. It's under the parks and forestry. Yes, uh, and I'll speak a little bit to it, but then I, Joe Curlin here from parks and forestry is also available. We've been working with the Lakeshore United soccer group and the for the long-term development and use of this city property, which was gifted to the city as for recreational use only. Right. So part of it is, is that we've just put in some funding, primarily I believe um, this is from the, the park impact fee, that we would use some of the funds to help with development of some of the areas that could be beneficial to all residents, such as future playground, uh, some parking lot improvements for accessibility. There's talking about future trails that could be incorporated into this development that could be used for hiking, jogging, um, and so forth around the complex. So there's not a specific exact um, project other than next year, I believe, Joe, and if Joe would like to speak upon this, I think we're looking at helping with the asphalt paving of, of the parking lot to um, start that process. Thank you. Yeah, I really don't have much to add to that. Um, we're opening bids 
just to get a base course in of the, the picture that you, you've seen that was turned in uh, for the parking lot. So then uh, part of that 100,000 would be the paving of that parking area for next year and then some of the sidewalks and, and walkways that would connect to that. Any other questions? Alder Mitch, no? Yeah, Alder Mitchell. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Uh, continuing through, I was looking at the street schedule because capital improvements, every time this comes up, that we've been saying for however many years now that that is our focus. I always like to see that we're continuing to include all the projects we had, if not finding opportunity to add more. I noticed that this is labeled differently this time and I will admit I am not familiar. What is, could somebody please answer what complete streets means beyond just the blurb that is in here regarding the development of a policy? Yes, Elderman Mitchell, I'd be happy to. Complete streets is, is a concept that um, is really being um, advocated by the DOTs and the Federal Highway Administration as well as transportation planners that when we're looking at road networks, it's just not about the car anymore. Multimodalism, thinking of the pedestrian, thinking of the bicyclist, thinking of other uh, citizens that are, let's say mobility challenge. Transit is another key factor in this. How do we accommodate transit? Um, bus, bus stops and, and, and other, other types of infrastructure that it takes a holistic approach to designing their streets. So what we're looking at is when we talk about, it used just to be an asphalt resurfacing program or fixing the streets program. We're looking to expand that and not when we fix a street, we look at the other aspects of the street as well to make larger improvements to that network that benefit a larger portion of our population. The, the policy will be uh, shortly coming as well to the, this common council. And it's really a guiding principle and philosophy that once we adopt, it will be very helpful for us to have that uh, policy in place for us to then secure future funding from other agencies such as the Department of Transportation at the state and federal level. Thank you. Alder Flicky Pineski. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm gonna cue on motor vehicles. Um, there's a motor vehicle fund for 1.8 million. Um, I am remembering that this council started a program to uh, lease motor vehicles. Is that included in this 1.8 million? Is that what this line is about? Or is that an ongoing expense and we don't even see it in capital improvements? That's correct. So that, the lease program is an ongoing expense to our motor vehicle. Uh, operating budget. We this is capital acquisition, and in the the lease program is really for what I would. It, it, it's our light equipment, pickup trucks, uh, smaller types of vehicles, up to about a one ton dump truck that we have in our fleet. The the one point eight is for what we call as our heavy heavy equipment. That would be a tandem or triaxle dump truck with a plow and salter. It could be an excavator, it could be a front end loader, it would, could be a, a bucket truck, a street sweeper. So it's that heavy type of equipment that this 1.8 is used to acquire. Okay, but I still see one ton dump truck, a pickup truck with an extended cab, and it's not part of the motor vehicle fund, and it's not part of motor vehicle replacement. And then I add in the police that has sports utilities, sports utility vehicles and unmarked vehicles. So I'm looking at yep. two and a half million dollars here in addition to what we spend on other motor vehicles. Is that accurate? Well, that's correct. The motor vehicle fund is strictly a public works fund. It does not fund police, 
fire vehicles or other department vehicles within the city. Okay, thank you. Alder Perella. I have this question each, each, every year actually, and so you have to forgive me, please, to ask that again. We have two hundred thousand dollars per year, I believe, uh, for the next four years for sidewalk maintenance. So the question is, how many miles or how much of sidewalk we maintain with two hundred thousand dollars and? Um, what is the percentage of sidewalks we have that we are actually able to maintain? Uh, that's an excellent question. We, I would say we have probably, if you, I'd say we probably have right around between a 325 to 350 miles of sidewalk within our community. Typically our sidewalk budget for many, many years has been only 100,000. Uh, that's not, that we're running through that weight. Uh, far, too, far too quickly, costs have gone up. And uh, so what we're proposing is at least 200,000. Still, at $200,000, uh, it, it's in terms of sidewalks, in terms of replacing, we're, we're not able to replace all the sidewalks within this program within a 100-year period. So we, we, we maintain, we do it on a, a complaint basis as well as we have inspection zones that we, that we routinely go out and will target certain areas of the city uh, as part of our program and responsibility. Sidewalks, however, do last uh, longer than, than what I would say street networks, just because they don't have the pounding of traffic and, and, and so forth. So in a, in a, lot, of, in a lot of cases, we have, we'll, we'll have sidewalks that are 75 years old in many cases. Nevertheless, it's still, uh, there's a tremendous amount of infrastructure and value in this community when you talk about our sidewalk network. Any other questions, Alder Pro? Well, I'm, it's always, to me, it's always, uh, again, if we want to improve uh, pedestrian mobility in our city, and we say that in so many ways, right? Even the DOT, as uh, the director said, uh, is trying to force on us the, 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 the positive concept of complete street, which makes absolute sense and includes sidewalks, includes everything else, includes uh, bike lanes and so on. So I'm, I'm trying to convey that uh, I think we should make more of an intentional effort to focus on pedestrian mobility, not just catching up or maintaining at the minimum, and so I'm trying to understand how to, how that can be um, accommodated or changed. I understand that even increasing $100,000 would not make a big dent. I'm trying to rather convey that perhaps we have to address the program of sidewalks with an aggressive approach, at least as aggressive as we do with major project of the streets. All right. Thank you, oh, Dr. Beeble. And, and, I, I, and I, 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 I would agree with that assessment. And one of the things that we've been able to do as well, in addition to this funding, is use some of the street funding. When we do projects, we upgrade all of the corners, for instance, to the new ADA Handicap Accessibility Standard, which is a much more accessible grade we add the detectable warning plates at all the intersections. So there's been some great improvements with that uh, at the intersections for mobility where we come across intersections that don't even have uh, an existing ramp today. So we've been able to really focus on all of our projects as well. So that, that's a, 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 a key factor in this as well. So I think I'm not, I'm here to, I'm, I'm here, I echo, I hear what you're saying, and I, and I, and we're, 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 we agree with everything you're saying. It, it's a balancing act of how do we fund this all together, 
And I think that's some of the philosophy that we're trying to move towards is uh, balancing these needs of all the projects, not just focusing on, on streets as, as an automobile, in other words. Alder Mitchell. Thank you, Chair. I, uh, Alder Flicky-Bineski mentioned the police SUVs earlier. I just wanted to note that if memory serves, we specifically exempted police department vehicles from that leasing program, and I think that was on the basis of the wear and tear that go on the vehicles and perhaps the mileage. Just general comments from me were through my list. Um, I know our focus is always on just the next year in the plan, but this one, I guess, covers a bit more than that because even if we're not immediately going to be spending or borrowing for those future years, we are still stating this is somewhat consistent with what we plan to enact in the future. Looking at the chart on page three that goes over the net debt issued in that year, the net debt paid, and what our outstanding debt is, we are going very quickly from ending this year with $59 million of outstanding debt to a projected 95 in 2028. If I did my math correctly, 60% of the state limit puts us around 115 million as the city's policy for its debt limit. And it seems like the current plan we have without any filtering is going to be sprinting to that, at which point it could leave the city in a situation in the future where it does not have the access to the capital it needs to address needs that are coming up at that time. If the question was direction from the body, I believe this is here for discussion only, so we probably can't actually give any formal direction, but looking at the numbers on the paper in front of us, it looks like there's no option but to try to find a way to pare back somehow so that we can actually consistently support this plan throughout the years. That is most likely all for me tonight, thank you. All right. Director Krieger. Just one item of note on that table that you are talking about. We, because we have, um, we could build to um, assist with the um, understanding of the table because there are, um, the payments that are included right now don't have the full estimates for what our payments would be of the new debt issuance. So our debt wouldn't compile as high as what is showing in the table, but it definitely would be higher. So I. I understand your concern and I will make note of that. Thank you. All righty. Alder Salazar. Um, uh, Alder Mitchell, thank you for that, um, pointing that out. I, that was good information for us to think about. But I want to go back to what Alder Perella was sharing about the sidewalk. Um, Director Beeble, is there any possibility in that um, 3.9 of that complete street that is you know, we can put a portion of that to, towards sidewalks. Um, you know, as you're talking about sort of the completion of the project, I'm just understanding if there's a percentage breakdown or do you have, or if that's not, not possible. Yes, uh, it should, the short answer is yes. And especially on those streets where we're doing a reconstruction, where we're doing curb and gutter, we look at the sidewalks. We don't replace every single sidewalk, but we'll concentrate on those sections that, let's say there's some bad panels within the section of street we're working on. We can focus and get those repaired and get them to match and be um, upgraded, in other words. We wouldn't do a complete sidewalk removal along with the street, but we would fix those sidewalks to get them to the level that is necessary for them to be quality sidewalk, in other words. Can I, I'm gonna follow up with that. Another question, so you, they are, what's con included in that 3.9 is about complete projects for the new ones. We, we're not, you can't allocate any of that towards repairing of the current sidewalk repair needs that we need. We, we would look at the sidewalks adjacent to these projects with, with on, on those streets and help with these projects repair the sidewalk on these street networks that are being proposed, Got in it. other words. So that would be in, in, in addition, above and beyond the 200,000, in other words. So we're, 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 we're looking at the concentration in terms of, like I mentioned, all the crosswalks 
get upgraded on these projects. But then we could also look at, you know, certain panels and getting the sidewalk sections along these street networks uh, uh, to, a, to a, a good standard as well. So we can make that a priority when we're looking at these new streets and what's around there. That, and, that, and that's and part- I, I would encourage you to also think about tracking that, right? So as you're updating these streets, really think about how many of these sidewalks we've done so that when we come back to this budget meeting, we can say out of those 200, what did you say, 230 a mile? I know it's insane, but um, you know, you say this year we uh, repaired 50 miles of sidewalk. Yeah, that, that we could definitely track, track, track the number of, of square footage or miles of sidewalks that we, that we repair, as well as it, it, this, this goes right along of what we're talking about with the complete streets philosophy is that it's not just about the street, we ought to be looking at the sidewalk, we ought to be looking at you know, urban forestry, putting, 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 forest, uh, putting trees back within these areas. Also looking at street lighting. Is it appropriate in this neighborhood? Is it not? Let's, let's take a look at the holistic approach. Great, thank you. Alder Filicki Pineski. Thank you. Um, this is a little bit of, of the same sort of thing that, that uh, my colleague on finance is looking at. I'm looking at a trend line and, and how, for example, this budget, what we see in 2024, may or may not be what we looked at when we looked at the capital improvement plan last year. So I think that's pretty important because I do appreciate a trend line. I also don't appreciate when a trend line goes like this. <laughs> So, so my, my question is, as we approve the 2004, uh, the 2024-2028 capital improvement program, will we see the same numbers, perhaps adjusted for inflation, in 2025? Because I don't think we saw the same numbers this year. So how does this... How does this play out? How does this work? And I know we always haven't had a five-year trend line, and I do appreciate it. So how does it, how does it work moving forward? So I may or may not have an answer for this because uh, finance doesn't have any capital improvement projects. So I can um, only speak on what's been turned in to me throughout this process. Um, I will say that I believe that departments um, have submitted the, the full requests that they feel that they need, and I'm hoping that they included those in the, in the future years as well, and I, from what information I've received, I believe that is the case. So I don't feel that it would be another high spike in the future years, um, but I would have to defer to my colleagues, the other department heads who have these projects to make sure that what I am saying is uh, in fact true. Thank you. Any other questions, Alder? Mm -hmm. No. Nope. Alrighty, Alder Decker. Oh, uh, one. Uh, um, chief, the chief had something to add for you. Yeah, thank you, Chair. So, uh, for the fire department's example, we we couldn't. Our Quint was in the 2026 plan for 2026 replacement, but because it's a three to four year build out and we can't put money and commit money from councils in the future, the only recourse in order to get it ordered by 2026 would be to have to put it not. So we moved ours up. We also took some things off from you know, for 2024. Uh, the other example I can give you is we, you know, due to all the lake activity and everything since I've been here, the dive team, the re rescue swimmer program, we've never had a boat. We had, something back in the day that really, I don't know even who qualifies as a boat, but we had something. And uh, so now I put in for a boat in 2028, I believe, or somewhere around there. Uh, again, because anticipating future needs, development, that kind of stuff. So, so that is a change. But as things come up, you will see the fire department not request as much because we're trying to spread things out in our plan but because of the way the ambulances and the delay and, and chassis and all that, it bunched up again. 
So there was really nothing, uh, you know, that we could do to avoid that. But as our, when things keep getting kicked down the can down the road, um, as, as the saying goes, it's difficult to not spread things out because all of a sudden it bunches and that's the, that's where we're in today. And public works. Yeah, it, this has been a great discussion, and I think you have some excellent questions. I think, unfortunately, this is this is a you know a result of timing. We have a lot of our projects, especially when it comes to buildings and other infrastructure. If you look back, we talk about the headquarters, fifty years old. The municipal service building, it's 60 years old. The transit building, another 50 year old build. A lot of the infrastructure that we, we have existing today was all built in the 70s, late 60s. So now we're at the point in timing wise that we either have to make significant capital investment in these facilities or even look to build new to meet the new standards that we're facing in, in this world. So it's not that, um, you know, these weren't unplanned, it's, it's just a, a timing, as well as the way the economy has, has really hit us after COVID, we've seen tremendous increases in costs of equipment, materials, and contracting. Um, when we looked at our street program, we, we did a presentation back in 2013 talking about a comprehensive street improvement program. The, back in 2013, the value that we should have been spending every year starting in 2013 was $4 million a year. That's what you see today. And given where we are with our, with our, with our pricing and our, our value of money, what we're able to purchase, we're probably doing less streets than we were doing in 2013. So uh, it's, the other factor is for many, many years, the prior councils and prior administrations, we only had borrowing of $2 million a year. For a city this size and a budget our size, um, that wasn't necessarily sustainable. And I think we're starting to see some of the effects of delaying projects as the chief mentioned, kicking it down the road, eventually, it's gonna get expensive and we're gonna to have to pay for this. Thank you, Director Beeble. Alder Decker. Uh, I hate to go back to this, but this is uh, on the, we were talking about the sidewalks and that, that, that money, does, does that come back to us in assessments? It does a portion. It, it, we typically, we'll have anywhere from five, in, in some cases with sidewalks uh, being expensive, if they're over, I believe 5,000, they have up to 10 years to pay on assessment. So we use a special assessment fund as well to help uh, use some of that funding to fund some of this. So the, the sidewalk doesn't necessarily all have to be general borrowing in other words. Okay. <clears throat> Any other questions? Seeing none, that, that will weigh over for next week. Uh, I am number six, resolution number 73-23-24 by Alderpersons Mitchell and Felicki Paneski, establishing the 2024 budget appropriations and the 2023 tax levy for use during the calendar year. And that will lay over as well. Our next meeting is October 23rd, 2023. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Mm -hmm. Motion made and second. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Chair votes aye. Ayes have it. We are adjourned at 752. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night.